find the equation, we are writing an equation from a graph. Here, I'm going to use vertex form. I think the vertex, now when I give you these problems ordinarily, you will have no doubt about what the vertex is. I do believe the vertex is at 1, 1. And I have a point right here, so I know the vertex is at 1, 1. And I also have this point over here, which would be 0, 2. So our vertex is 1, 1. That means that is our H and K. We have H. We have K. H is 1. And K is 1. And then we have another X and Y value, 0, 2. So this is my H and K. And then this is X and this is Y. I'm going to substitute those in for X and Y. Y is 2. So we have 2 equals A times X is 0 minus 1 squared plus 1. And we can see in this equation that the only variable that we have left is A. We need to solve for A. So we have 2 equals negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 times a is a. Subtract 1 from both sides, and we see that a equals 1. So my equation would be y equals a times x minus 1 squared plus 1. An equation of this parabola. If it asked for it in standard form, then I would continue and put it into standard form. It does not specify, so here's an equation of the parabola. Example two, I do believe that this, again, there'll be no doubt when I give you a problem on a quiz or a test, you're going to know what those numbers are. I'm going to say that this vertex is 1, 3, and I'm going to use this point right here, 0, negative 1. All right, so we have y equals x minus h is 1 for the vertex, squared plus 3. And now using my other point here, I see that y is negative 1. equals a times x is 0 plus 3. Negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 times a is a. These are pretty simple. Subtract 3 from both sides, and we see that a equals negative 4, so our equation would be y x is 1, and y is negative 3. So just looking at it, I'm like, a is negative 4. How can a be negative if my parabola is not facing upside down? And that's because I did not write my vertex correctly. So this would be negative 3. That was a good check for me, checking to make sure that everything makes sense when you get to the final answer, and it did not make sense. So my vertex is at 1, negative 3. And now when I add 3 to both sides, I get 2. That makes more sense. A is 2. So y equals 2 times my vertex. And there is the equation of this parabola. The vertex is at 1, negative 3. A is 2. I could test this to make sure that it was true. If this is... 2, negative 1. This point right here, I could check. 2, when x is 2, y is negative 1. So let's check. 2, negative 1. Does it work in my equation? y is negative 1. 2 times x is 2. 2 minus 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1, and 1 squared is 1 minus 3. Does negative 1 equal 2 minus 3? Check. 
the equation that I came up with for this parabola works. It's as easy as that. Do a check. We know in algebra, we can check all the time. All right. Looking at the third example that you're going to have to draw, we have an x-intercept at 2 and negative 1. And then we have a y-intercept at negative 1. This time, I don't know what the vertex is. It's not at a whole number. It could be any fraction in here. It could be, you know, fourth. It could be three-fifths. It could be one-half. We just don't know exactly what that is going to be for the vertex. So you can't use the vertex this time. But they did give us intercepts. And we do have a second equation for intercept form. So we will use this one just like we used vertex form. All right, so we have our P and our Q. Those are the intercepts. So we have Y equals A times X minus negative 1 times X minus 2. So we're using the intercepts, negative 1 and 2. We are all use, also using the y-intercept, 0, negative 1. So there's our x and our y that we're going to use in our equation. y is negative 1. a times x plus 1 times, oof, our x is 0 times 0 minus 2. We have negative 1 equals a times 1 times negative 2. Negative 1 equals negative 2a. a equals 1 half. Our equation then will be y equals 1 half. Does it make sense that our a is 1 half? And then we have x plus 1 times x minus 2. Our intercepts are at 2 and negative 1. And our a, there is the equation in intercept form. Again, if they ask for it in standard form, you would just continue to multiply and put it in standard form. And that is writing equations of quadratics from a picture. Writing quadratic equation given three points. We are using standard form. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. We have these XY points here, and we are going to substitute them into the equation. Y is 3. X is 0. And the second point, we're going to do the same thing for the next two points. 2 for y and 1 for x. And the third coordinate, y is 3 and x is 2. Next thing we're going to do is simplify these equations. And we get that 3 equals 0 squared times a is 0, plus b times 0 is 0, and we're left with just c on this one. The second equation, we have 2 equals 1 squared is 1 times a is a b times 1 is b, and plus c. And the third equation, we have 4a 
plus 2b plus c. The goal here is to find out what a, b, and c are so that we can write it in standard form. Well, here is c. So the next thing I'm going to do is substitute in for c. We have 2 equals a plus b plus 3. The second equation is 3 equals 4a plus 2b plus 3. So we're substituting in that c is 3. I'm going to shift the 3 to the left-hand side of the equation. Minus 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 equals a plus b. And then negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 4a plus 2b. All right, so in Algebra 1, we learned how to solve systems of equations. There are three techniques to being able to solve a system of equations. This would be like x plus y equals negative 1. Two variables and an equation. We could solve this by graphing, by substitution, or elimination. Here we're going to use elimination. That is the mathematician's choice. Most of the time it's their first choice. The goal here is to add these two equations together and to get one of your variables here to cancel. Well, my b's are not going to cancel if I add these up. 1b plus 2b is 3b. 1a plus 4a is 5a. So my variables are not canceling here. But what we could do is multiply the equation. I'm going to go with my b's. I'd like to multiply my equation by something that's going to make it cancel with 2b. Well, negative 2b and positive 2b would cancel. So if I multiply this equation by negative 2, that means that we have negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Negative 2 times a is negative 2a. And negative 2 times b is negative 2b. I'm going to bring down my second equation. And we're going to add them up. So we see here that the B terms cancel. That was the goal. Negative 2A plus 4A is 2A equals 2 plus 0 is 2. And we get that A equals 1. So we have C. We have A. We just need to be able to find B. I am going to go back to an equation that has A, B, and C in it. I'm going to choose the first one. And I'm going to substitute in my a is 1. We don't know what b is yet, and we know that c is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4, and when I put the 4 on the left-hand side of the equation, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Now that we have a, b, and c, we write our final equation, which would be y equals a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is 3. If I wanted to check to make sure that I had the right equation, all I have to do is graph it. And I'm going to put in my equation that I've created. x squared minus 2x plus 3. And I'm going to check my table of values. Are these ordered pairs in my table of values? 2, we have 3. When x is 1, we have 2. And when x is 0, we have 3. All right, the next equation is a little bit more difficult because you don't have 0 for x, which, which helps to just get your c term. We're going to start the same way. We're going to substitute in our values to the quadratic equation. y is 2. And then x is 1. b times x plus c. And the second one, y is 1. And the third equation, y is 6. And a is 3. All right, we're going to simplify.
as we can see here, nothing is canceling. So we're solving the same way that we did the first one, except we're going to have a couple extra steps here. All right. So I am going to label this as equation one, equation two, equation three. I am going to use equation one and two. I'd like to get one of my variables to cancel. So I'm using equations one and two. All right, the goal here is the same. I'd like to add these two equations together. But I need a variable to cancel. I'm going to get my C's to cancel. So if I multiply this equation by negative 1, that would be negative C, and that would make these cancel. Negative 1 times negative 2 negative 1 times a, negative 1 times b, and negative 1 times c. And then we still have our second equation. When I add these together, my c terms cancel, and we get 3 equals 4 minus 1a is 3a. Negative 2, negative 1 is negative 3. All right. There is an equation that I'm going to be using. This now I'm going to choose equations two and three. Again, I would like to multiply by negative 1. And when I multiply by negative 1, it's going to change the signs of everything in here. So I'm just going to change the signs so that I can add them together. 1 becomes negative. 4a becomes negative. Negative 2b becomes positive, And c becomes negative. I have negative c and positive c that cancel. 6 minus 1 is 5. 9 minus 4 is 5a, and then 3b plus 2b is 5b. I now have two equations that I am going to put together, and we're back to this step here, where we have two equations that we can add together. So I'm going to be using these two equations here. Three A minus three B and five equals five A plus five B. Let's see, one and two multiplying by negative one is two negative A, negative B, negative C. All right, again, I need to multiply something to my equations to make my B's or my A's cancel. I am going to multiply. I actually have to multiply both the equations by something. I need to multiply by 5 on this one, that would give me negative 15, and then I need to multiply by 3 on this one, and it would give me positive 15. So 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 3 is 15a, and then minus 15b. 3 times 5 is 15 equals... 15a plus 15b. When I add these two equations together, 
my negative 15b and positive 15b cancel and I get 30a equals 30. We get a equals 1. All right, a equals 1. So I'm going to substitute into an equation that has two variables here. a equals 1. So let's substitute into the first equation here. 3 equals 3a minus 3b. We know that a is 1. Subtract 3 and we get 0 equals negative 3b and we get b equals 0. We have a and b, so now I need an equation that has an a, b, and a c. I'm going to go back to this equation. Negative 2 equals a plus b plus c. Negative 2, a equals 1, b equals 0, and we're trying to solve for c. So when I subtract 1 to the other side, we get c equals negative 3. And now I'm ready to write my equation in standard form. y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. My final equation then would be y equals x squared minus 3. No b term this time. And again, I can check my equation to see if those ordered pairs are in the equation. Graph, we have x squared minus 3. My table of values, we have negative 2, 1. Looking for one negative two, one negative two, and three six. All of the ordered pairs are in the equation. Now.